Hello everyone and welcome to my talk. The title is Can a Natural Number Be Negative? And I'm Ido Tsamerit. This is a joint work with uh, Yaroslav Alexiev, Dima Grigoriev, and Edward Hirsch. Now I'm going to speak about this principle that we call the binary value principle. We are going to address this absurdly sounding question whether the, the a natural number can be negative. In order to do this, we're going to first formulate it precisely. And what I mean is, is this binary value principle. So this principle expresses the following. The number whose bits are x1 to xn and whose value is computed by the left-hand side of this linear equation is equal to minus one. And thus, when the xi i's are variables that are Boolean, namely gets a zero one, this linear equation is obviously unsatisfiable. So this says that the number, the value of a number written in binary is minus one, which is unsatisfiable. We say that, and we can refute this or prove that it is unsatisfiable, we say that we have proved that the fact that a natural number cannot be negative. Now, I'm going to uh, address this question whether this is provable in restricted computational or proof setting. And basically, we're going to see that it is not provably, provable efficiently in certain proof system. Now, this is going to be connected then to proof complexity of algebraic and semi-algebraic proofs. And our results are also connected to algebraic circuit complexity. And specifically, the lower bound is going to be conditioned on a condition from algebraic circuit complexity, the schuben smale hypothesis that I'm going to describe later. Now, first we have to explain the context of this work. And as I said, it's about proof complexity. So let's discuss very briefly what we need to know from proof complexity. And this is quite, uh, quite basic stuff that we need to know. And here it is. So we have proof systems, and this is what we study in proof complexity. And there are two ways to look at it more or less. One is from more a computer science algorithmic perspective. And this is the way to look at proof system as a non-deterministic algorithm, which characterizes um, certain kind of proof search algorithms or implicit proof search algorithms. In this sense, when we prove certain lower bounds on proof system, we actually prove a runtime lower bound on the algorithm that searches these uh, 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 proofs. So in this sense, uh, proof complexity helps to analyze uh, runtime of certain families of algorithms. Another way to look at it more from the structural uh, complexity point of view, and a view that I uh, slightly uh, uh, prefer, is the following. In the ideal world, when we actually understand everything about proof complexity and proof systems, we attain the goal of solving the fundamental uh, hardness problem of NP versus co-NP and hence also P versus NP. And this is because if we lower bound proofs uh, that, and these proof system proves tautologies, which is a co-NP complete uh, language, then in this sense, we attain a, a separation between NP and co-NP if we show this for any proposition of, proposition of proof system, which is polynomially verifiable. Now, these are the main uh, ideas behind uh, the motivation behind proof complexity. And let's look at this, uh, the illustration on the left-hand side. So you don't need to understand much about this. There's a lot of proof systems that are considered in the literature, but what we need to know is that there are these proof system and they are uh, categorized by the strength or relative strength. And sometimes we know that we have a simulation. So I put here the, an error from one proof system to the other if it is simulatable in polynomial time, polynomial size. And sometimes we know that there is a separation between them. So one proof system is provably stronger than the other, and that's why I put here S, stronger, or strictly stronger. 
Now, you don't need to read all of these, and that's why I put them in gray, but one uh, proof system that, that is important to this work is the following IPS. This was uh, introduced by Grocher and Pitassi in 2014, and it's an acronym for ideal proof system. So you only need to know now that it's an algebraic proof system, and it's very strong. So that's why I put it at the, at the topmost uh, part of this diagram because it can simulate all, almost all known proof systems to us. So what is the motivation of this work? Let's start with motivation. The first one is the question whether semi-algebraic proofs are actually stronger than algebraic ones. Now, what do I mean by uh, this question? So first, in order to understand the meaning, we need to understand what is an algebraic proof and what is a semi-algebraic proof. Proof. Now, I'm going to show you uh, the main paradigm of algebraic and semi-algebraic proofs. There's a, a lot of variety of uh, and families of proof system along these lines, but let's understand what it does uh, uh, in, in general. So in general, algebraic proofs are proofs whose inference is over the polynomial ideal. So we reason over a polynomial ideal. We start from a set of axioms like the Fi's. So we walk over some field and we have polynomials F1 to Fm in the algebraic variables X. Now these algebraic variables usually range over 0, 1 and we, and we can express this precisely. And then we consider these ide this ideal generated by these polynomials. Now, this ideal is defined as follows based on these inference rules. So if so the Fi's are in the ideal, but also if P and Q is all, are already in the ideal, then also H times P, where H is a polynomial, any polynomial. So this is also in the ideal. And if P and Q are in the ideal, then P plus Q is also in the ideal. And these are the two inference rules. Now, observe this kind of very simple but important uh, um, property of the ideal. Uh, these inference rules preserve equalities with zero. So if I start from axioms that are, I know that they are zero of the some field assignment, then every inference is also zero. Now, what is semi-algebra? What are semi-algebraic proofs? They are very similar to the uh, to uh, algebraic proofs, only uh, that instead of working over the ideal, they work over the cone. So the inference is over the cone and not the ideal. And here we need because it will uh, uh, it is a cone, we need to consider an ordering. Let's consider the reals. So what we do here is the following. We start from, like in the algebraic case, we start from Fi's, which we consider as sort of axioms, and these are the basic polynomials that we have over R, and we say they are in the cone. And the inference is like this. If P and Q is in the cone, then also P times Q is in the cone. So notice it's not any polynomial like, like in the algebraic case. This is a only polynomial, only a product of polynomials that we already know are in the cone. And the same goes, and, and the same uh, rule with the plus. So if I know that P and Q are in the cone, then P plus Q is in the cone. And also this rule. If I have any S, any kind of polynomial, I can take and assume that the square of this polynomial is in the cone. Now, what does this cone represent? It represents a kind of an uh, intuitively an ideal that preserves non-negativity. In what sense? In the following sense. If I start from the Fi's and I assume they are non-negative, then everything in my cone is non-negative. Now, the, motiv the second motivation of this work is even without considering semi-algebraic proofs, just consider algebraic proofs as a very and a, a very strong proof system in uh, the algebraic world, and this will be the IPS. So consider this and try to prove some strong lower bound, namely super polynomial lower bound on strong proof systems. And that's what we show. 
but our proof, our lower bound proof is going to be conditional. It is going to be conditional on a condition from algebraic complexity that I will explain later. Now, this kind of phenomenon of a lower bound on a very strong proof system like IPS is not known at all in proof complexity, even conditionally. So we don't have even non-explicit or uh, conditional lower bounds in proof complexity, and we, are, uh, uh, we have achieved this based on certain condition and based on uh, 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 and using uh, uh, algebraic uh, proof systems, so this will not be a, uh, uh, this will not be an instance which is boolean. It will be an instance which is algebraic in nature. And the hard instance that we discover conditionally is precisely the binary value principle. Now let's look at our result in slight more detail. So to understand our result. I first go over the basic definition of algebraic circuit. So algebraic circuit is very similar to uh, a, a Boolean circuit, right? Only that instead of Boolean uh, or uh, logical connectives like and or or, what I have is plus and times. So I put here plus and times and on the, so it's a directed acyclic graph that has leaves and on the leaves I have the variables like x i's and maybe scalars like three and then from them I have edges directed toward uh, the root and if I have this plus gate this plus gate computes x1 plus x2 this polynomial and if I have this plus gate it computes x2 plus three and this is a polynomial and if I have times it computes the product of the polynomial computed in this gate and the polynomial computed in this gate and the whole circuit computes the polynomial computed in the output node. Now the size of uh, an algebraic circuit is simply the number of nodes in the circuit. Now a polynomial for us is a formally is a formal polynomial, namely a vector of coefficients of the monomial. So here is the first monomial, the second monomial, the third monomial, and the fourth monomial computed by this circuit. Now this is important. An algebraic circuit is said to be constant free if the scalars on its leaves, leaves are only zero, one, and minus one. That is the only possibility for scalars. And that's what, what we say is constant free. So three here is illegitimate for constant free circuits. Now, here comes our first result. Algebraic proofs are weaker strictly than semi-algebraic ones under the complexity assumption that I will describe soon. So to formulate this, what we do is we first formulate a very strong semi-algebraic proof system. We call this, similar to the ideal proof system of Grotjo and Pitassi, we call this the cone proof system or CPS. So this characterizes very strong semi-algebraic reasoning and basically it can simulate all known to us proof systems. Now, Intuitively, you can think about CPS as a positive Stellenzatz or a sum of squares written as algebraic circuits. And this is very similar to IPS. Now let's see it more concretely. It is slightly simplified, but it still captures the idea quite well. So a simplified CPS is as follows. I want to refute inequalities. So I take these polynomial inequalities, Fi's, and I want to refute them, namely, prove that they don't have a common root. They don't have a solution. Now, usually we do this over zero one. Here, I, it, it, I didn't write it uh, explicitly. So what we do to refute it in CPS is very simple. We simply take a sum over J of some sum of squares. A sum of squares are polynomials, which are sum of squares of polynomials. Right. So any sum of square, you can take it, you can take uh, freely and multiply a product of the Fi's. So I take my axioms, my cons initial constraints and multiply them as I want together. And then multiply them by some sum of square and sum all these terms. Now I want this 
to be as a polynomial, the formal polynomial minus one. So this whole term should be, uh, should compute the polynomial minus one. Now, what is, how do I write this? So in CPS, I simply write this as an algebraic circuit. So I write all this sum as sum of terms. Each term will be an algebraic circuit written explicitly as I've just showed you. So this is CPS and basically we show it simulates all known proof system uh, in the literature of proof complexity that we know of. Now, IPS is very similar, but it's algebraic. So we start from equations and we have this big sum of GI, any polynomial that you want times FI, but now it must equal one, not minus one. And that is IPS. And what we show is that this is strictly stronger than this one. Now this is again written as algebraic circuit. And that's how we compute the, the, the complexity of this proof system, considering the minimal circuit size computing this sum uh, that equals to one for this initial axiom. Now, Now let's look at this uh, in the context of this illustration that we have. So what we have is the following. We have this illustration of all the proof system that uh, a lot of proof system, not all, that we are interested in proof complexity. We have resolution, constant depth, and so forth. You don't need to know them. You just need to know for this, uh, to understand the basics of our result, the following, that we work with a very strong proof system, IPS, and we have CPS, which is even stronger now than IPS, and it simulates again everything that we know of, including these uh, uh, semi algebraic proofs. And what we showed is this red stuff here that CPS actually is separated uh, uh, from IPS, namely the binary value principle has short proofs here, but does not have short refutations or proofs here. And this is all based on, of course, our assumption from complexity. Now, we show something slightly stronger. We show that not only that this strong algebraic proof system is separated from strong, very strong semi-algebraic proof system, we show that this algebraic proof, strong algebraic proof system is actually separated in the sense that it cannot simulate even the, the weakest known semi-algebraic proof system like sum of squares, because sum of squares has short refutations of the binary value principle. So all this region of semi-algebraic proofs is separated from this region. Now, even if we don't consider semi-algebraic uh, proofs uh, and, and the relation that we have uh, discovered, it's very interesting to understand our lower bound as as a lower bound, as a conditional lower bound on very strong algebraic proof systems. And this is of course the, the lower bound uh, against IPS of the binary value principle instance. And I recall that this is just this sum, this, the value of a binary number equals minus one, which is unsatisfiable in a linear equation. Now, as I said, BVP is hard for IPS. There's no short, small size, polynomial size refutation of this simple instance, but there are very uh, simple linear size, semi-algebraic refutations of this. Now let's see precisely now what is the hardness assumption that we use. So this is the schubin smale hypothesis. It's a very elegant assumption that is, it's worth knowing even without uh, relation to this work. So the assumption is the following. There are no constant free algebraic circuits of polylogarithmic size in M that computes products of M factorial. So Km here is some non-zero uh, integer. And there are no polylogarithmic size, uh, constant free algebraic circuits that computes this Km times M factorials. And this is our assumption. 
Now, this is not an esoteric assumption. This is a mainstream, and so to speak, assumption that also leads to P versus NP uh, in the algebraic uh, model of uh, Bloom, Schub, and Smale. And also, uh, it leads by the, uh, the work of Burgesser to VP uh, X is, un, is uh, separated from VNP number. Namely, there are no small size algebraic circuits computing the permanent. Now let's speak a bit, a bit about this, this conditional lower bounds irrespective of semi-algebraic proofs. So what is the uh, consequence? So again, recall that IPS is a single circuit that computes the algebraic refutation, just big sum written as algebraic circuit. And what we show is that our lower bound actually extends the paradigm developed by uh, Forbes, uh, Spielka, myself, and Vigdeson from 2016 the paradigm of functional lower bounds approach to IPS. Now, I'm saying this because first it extends this results to general circuits, but also it explains why we cannot get something that is better than conditional lower bounds. So without, of course, actually proving some strong uh, separation like VP unequal to VNP. So without this proving this, we cannot get uh, an IPS lower bound via this approach for general circuits. So we get this, but conditional on the Schubs male hypothesis. Now let's see very, very briefly the proof ID behind this lower bound. So what we do is the following. So if you remember, we took, uh, uh, um, uh, we say that an IPS refutation is kind of a big sum and of the axioms and each axiom is axiom is multiplied by a polynomial. So in this case, we have only one axiom, right? So if this axiom is the only axiom that we have, it is the binary value principle, right? But I didn't tell you precisely, we actually have also other axioms, which are the Boolean axioms. These Boolean axioms say that the x's, the variables, xi's, are actually either zero or one, right? So this is vanishes, this polynomial vanishes over zero, one assignment. So the IPS refutation can be written as follows, and I assume contrapositively that there is a short refutation of the binary value principle. So I write it like G, some polynomial times the binary value principle, where I switch the size, the side of the one here, so there's plus one, plus the products, the polynomial product of the Boolean axioms. And all this equals M. M is some coefficient so here I took a more general view instead of writing this equal one, it equal m because I want to work not over the rationals, I want to work over z. Now this is uh, explained in detail in the full version that, that is available on uh, archive and uh, e, uh, triple e c. So let's assume that we have this small refutation, namely this can be written and it is, has small circuit. And also M is a constant with polynomial in N size constant free algebraic circuit. So that's why I wrote here tau M is polynomial in M. Tau is the constant free uh, complexity of the constant M. Now what we do, and this is a simple, uh, this is just a, an idea that I explain here, is that we plug in the bits of a number taken from zero to two to the n minus one, a natural number. So this natural number has, of course, a binary representation, and these are its bits, b1 to bn. So we plug in these bits here, and because the way the binary value principle is devised, we get here some number, some integer, and here we get, because bi's are zero, one, because of these are bits, we, we get that this is always vanishes, right? So this becomes zero and M here stays the same because it's a constant. A here is G under the uh, assignment B. So this changes, but the, we know that it's an integer. So what we get at the end is the following. We get that M is an integer, a constant integer of small tau complexity, small constant free algebraic circuit that is divisible by every number between one to two to the N. 
Now I added here one, and that's why it's from one to two to the n. Now you can see that this already quite is quite it resembles something that will lead to the lower bound because we need to prove that computing the factorial is uh, is hard. And you can read in the paper how we got it from this corollary. Now, what we do is 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 is, um, is not only the lower bound; is also we do some interesting upper bound. And precisely, we do the following: we characterize, we show that the binary value principle is not just a hard instance for algebraic proofs; it's also complete and sufficient in order to simulate in general semi-algebraic proofs. And this is, I've, I've written here as a slogan, IPS plus the binary value principle is equal to the cone proof system. So IPS plus the binary, the ability to prove uh, uh, quickly in small size, the binary value principle implies a simulation of, semi of strong semi-algebraic proofs like cone proof system. And that's what we show. And we do this based on a logical idea, which is common in, in, in this area is a kind of reflection principle. So we show that the binary value principle can actually uh, uh, act as a sort of reflection principle for semi-algebraic proofs. Now, what is the moral of all this story? There are several corollaries and ideas here. Let me take, t uh, tell you about two of them. So first, it's very interesting uh, to work with coefficients which are relatively large in magnitude. So notice the, uh, the binary value princi principle had very large uh, exponential in magnitude coefficients. But notice that the size of them, because I'm going to write them in binary, for instance, the size is polynomial, but the magnitude is high. So you see that you can, you can do something quite interesting with, large, uh, with coefficients of large magnitudes, and we know that we cannot do the same arguments with small uh, coefficients. Now, another thing that is interesting, I think, is the following. So this work shows, in some sense, a relation between the bit model, the Turing machine, and the, blue, and the algebraic models of Bloom, uh, Schub, and Smail, uh, model in the sense that it shows something like this. Then this is a formal statement. Our result imply the following, that if I have this as an assumption that the sum of variables is equal zero, and let's assume these are Boolean variables, and if this sum is equal zero, let's say over the rationales, then we cannot prove in IPS, in, in strong algebraic proof system, we cannot prove efficiently that the bit of this value, the ith bit of this value for any i, for any bit, is actually zero, although it is true. Because of course, if this is evaluates to zero, if this equals zero, then it's bit, every bit in this, uh, in this number is zero. So we cannot do, do, prove this in polynomial size, although we can express the ith bit of this sum um, in polynomial size. It's a circuit that does uh, carry save addition and products and bit arithmetic, but we cannot actually prove this statement in IPS. And this, I think, may or does already show something, at least in proof complexity, uh, about the connection between and the relation between the bit model, Turing machine, and the uh, algebraic models like uh, Bloom, Schub, and Smale, and other algebraic models of, uh, uh, of computation. And thank you for listening. And this was the talk. Thank you.